Uh, hi everyone, in this video I will uh, explain you how to solve one of the questions in our exam. So we need to draw the Nyquist diagram for a system with L of S given as K times S plus 1 over S squared times 1 minus S. And then we need to determine the stability of the closed loop system uh, based on the graph that we obtain. So first of all, when we want to draw the Nyquist plot, we set K equal to 1. As a result, we will have L of S given as S plus 1 over S squared times 1 minus S. And if we draw the location of the open loop poles and zeros of the system, we have a, po a 0 at minus 1. We have two poles here. So this is a 0. And we have a pole at s equal to plus 1. And now we need to determine the uh, Nyquist contour for our system. And we know that it cannot cross any poles. And in this case, we have two poles at the origin. So we need to go around the poles. And we can take them, keep them outside of the contour by drawing the contour in this way. Now, if we look at this, we, we see that there is a pole inside the, the contour. Yeah? Therefore, because of this, we have P equal to 1. Now, we need to draw the Nyquist diagram. And then from there, we can determine whether the closed loop system is uh, stable or not. We can think about our uh, contour in, in different segments. We can think that here we have is one segment. Then this is our second segment. And here we have the third segment. For the first segment, we have s equal to j omega, where omega starts from 0 plus and it goes to plus infinity. For the second segment, s is considered as e, r e to the power of j theta, where r goes towards plus infinity and theta goes from pi over 2 to minus pi over 2, crossing from 0. And for the third segment, we have s equal to r e to j theta, where r goes towards 0, and theta goes from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, crossing from 0 again. Now we can start to draw the uh, Nyquist diagram for each segment. So let's prepare the the graph here we have real axis imaginary axis for the first segment we have s equal to j omega as a result we can write l of s in the form of l of j omega and for that we will have 1 plus j omega over j omega squared times 1 minus j omega In terms of amplitude of L of j omega, we will have square root of 1 plus omega squared, omega squared, square root of 1 plus omega squared, or 1 over omega squared. In terms of phase of L of j omega, we will have phase of numerator, tan inverse tangent of omega, minus phase of denominator, j omega is squared will, will result in minus omega. Indeed, we will have 1 plus j omega over minus omega is squared, 1 minus j omega. So we will have pi for the uh, phase. And the phase of 1 minus j omega is equal to plus inverse tangent of minus omega. And it's equal to inverse tangent of omega minus pi minus inverse tangent of omega and it could be rewritten as 2 times inverse tangent of omega minus pi so this is phase of l of j omega and we have the amplitude of l of j omega equal to 1 over omega squared so from here we can see that for omega equal to epsilon, which is a very small value, 
a small positive value. We will have phase of L of J omega equal to 2 times inverse tangent of epsilon minus pi, which could be approximated as 2 times epsilon, because epsilon is quite small, minus pi. And in terms of amplitude, we will have 1 over epsilon squared, which is equal, in, equal to infinity. Therefore, we, the amplitude will be infinity and the phase will be minus pi plus some epsilon. So we will be at infinity and the phase will be equal to minus pi plus some epsilon. So we will be somewhere around here for omega equal to epsilon or zero plus. When omega becomes equal to one, we will have phase of L equal to two times inverse tangent of one minus pi. Inverse tangent of one is pi over four, so we will have pi over two minus pi or minus pi over two. In terms of amplitude, we will have one over one, which is equal to one. So at omega equal to one, we will be here. And as omega goes towards infinity, phase of L of j omega will be equal to 2 times inverse tangent of infinity minus pi. Inverse tangent of infinity is equal to pi over 2. So from here, we will have pi minus pi equal to 0. Phase will be equal to 0. Amplitude of L of j omega will be equal to 1 over infinity, which is equal to 0. So we will arrive at this point. So for that reason, we can draw the Nyquist plot for the first segment like this. For the second segment, we have s equal to r e to j theta, where r goes towards infinity and theta goes from pi over 2 to minus pi over 2, crossing from 0. If you replace s with this, we will have l of s given as r e to j theta minus 1. Uh, plus 1 at the, denom at the numerator, r e to j theta is squared, 1 minus r e to j theta. And since r goes towards infinity, these ones will be cancelled out, and L of s will be given as r e to j theta over minus r e to j theta to the power of 3, or we will have 1 over minus r e to j theta to the power of 2. Uh, in terms of amplitude, we will have 0 all the time, and then the phase will not be important. So this, the second segment will be mapped to this part. So this is what we have for the first segment. This is what we have for the second segment. Let's see what do we have for the third segment. In the third segment, S is equal to R e to J theta when R goes towards 0 and theta goes from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 crossing from 0. If we replace S with that, we will have R e to J theta plus 1, R e to J theta squared times 1 minus R e to J theta. And since the value of R is very small, we can neglect r e to j theta compared to 1. As a result, L of s will be equal to 1 over r e to j theta squared. Or we will have 1 over r squared times e to minus j 2 theta. And since r goes towards 0, we can rewrite this in the form of r e to minus j 2 theta, where r goes towards infinity. So we will have infinity in terms of the amplitude. And in terms of the phase, we will have minus 2 theta, where theta goes from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 crossing from 0. If we uh, show it with alpha, alpha is equal to minus 2 theta, theta goes from minus pi over 2 till pi over 2, therefore alpha will go from pi to minus pi crossing from 0. So we will go from pi to pi over 2, then 0 and then minus pi over 2 and then 2 minus pi.
therefore we can uh, yeah we, we will draw it but but before drawing that we can draw the Nyquist plot for for this segment as well for if I call it segment 4 the Nyquist plot for that will be the mirror of the Nyquist plot for the segment 1 with respect to the real axis so we will have Yeah, indeed we will have this. So here we will have omega equal to zero minus a little bit before zero. Here we will have omega equal to zero plus. And then now for the segment three, we will start from uh, amplitude equal to infinity and phase equal to pi. Let me pick another color. So it's this point in it because the Nyquist plot will be continuous. Then we will go towards amplitude equal to infinity, phase equal to pi over 2, amplitude equal to infinity, phase equal to 0, and then we will arrive at, at this point. And this will be our overall Nyquist plot for this system. Now we need to uh, discuss the stability of the closed loop system based on the different values of k, assuming that here we have minus 1. To discuss the stability based on different values of k, we need to check out the number of clockwise turns around the point minus 1 over k. So for that, we can discuss that. I will maybe write it here. So if minus 1 over k is between minus infinity and 0, so for any point on the real axis here in this region, we have n equal to 0. If minus 1 over k is between 0 and plus infinity, any point on this region, we have n equal to 1. Yeah, We have one clockwise encirclement around any point that you consider here. And since we already know that p is equal to 1, from here we will have z equal to n plus p, which is equal to 1, z equal to n plus p, which is equal to 2, and as a result, in both cases, the closed loop system will be unstable. Okay, and then we are done with the question. We, we know that the closed loop system will be unstable for any value of k for this example. Uh, okay, so that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.